Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. And tonight we have a special guest, and his name is David. And let me give you a little bit of a bio on David. David is a dedicated instructor of Thai massage in the Thai healing arts. Living and working with Thai since 2001, he had a unique opportunity to understand the Thai culture, traditions, and healing arts through over a decade of constant immersion. He is the executive director of the only comprehensive Thai medical education, research, and treatment center outside of Thailand. The Thai Institute of Healing Arts operates two Thai therapy centers that employ Thais and Westerners, offering Thai medical massage integrated with care provided by native Thai medicine doctors. The Institute has initiated multiple charitable projects in the U.S. and in Thailand, that benefit the people of Southeast Asia. When David is not living in Thailand, he regularly instructs classes that dive deep into the traditions and practices of Thai massage. Welcome tonight, David. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. So um, you're in, was it Western Virginia now? I'm in Northern Virginia, Northern, right okay, outside yeah. of Washington, D.C. So. Oh, okay. So it's my understanding that um, this is not your first career then. Uh, no, actually, I um, started out in the, the IT field, the information technology. I have a bachelor's of uh, science in information technology and uh, grew into Thai massage through my, my love of uh, helping people, through uh, my love of education and helping people grow their careers. So, uh, and that's just like um, total one, one spectrum of the world to the, uh, another with IT compared to massage and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a big transition. I uh, you know started out in the IT field, moved up through the ranks of management. Was uh, very happy with my career and uh, very happy with the people that I was working with. Um, but it was my my love of uh, the the Asian culture and uh, being around Asians for so many years that I eventually ended up going to Thailand in December of two thousand two. After having. Uh, been around a lot of ties. I, I finally decided to uh, go visit the country, and uh, with my first visit, I was introduced to Thai massage and fell in love with the healing arts of Thailand and the touch of the Thai people, and pretty much decided right there uh, after my first massage that I was going to uh, find training and uh, education to uh, perform Thai massage uh, for people to share the healing art of Thailand with others. And I was really hoping that someday I'd get good enough that I'd maybe even be able to open a school and start educating people and sharing it through education. And uh, I was very fortunate that I've been around lots of Thai people and the Thais have really supported my work in the field. And uh, through that support and the support of uh, many others, I've been able to follow that initial uh, dream of, of helping others through the healing arts of Thailand. And are you able to still um, get into the IT world? Do you still keep keep that um, in check a little bit too? Or I did for a while. I kept a lot of relationships uh, from my IT field, and uh, eventually, I uh, um, those kind of faded out. Of course, I still have lots of Facebook friends from my IT uh, background. But uh, I, I when I left the IT field in two thousand five. Um, I had been in doing Thai massage for about a year and a half, two years, and uh, I decided that I wanted to kind of set a floor for myself. I see, I've seen a lot of people, not just with massage, but other businesses, uh, leave their careers to go to one to another off of a dream and ultimately end up bankrupting themselves and having a lot of difficulty. So what I did is I, I set a floor for myself and I said, if I ever make less than X for three months in a row, I would go back to IT, and uh, that hasn't happened yet. So uh, <laughs> for the last uh, the last six years, I'm still uh, moving forward in my career and growing our, our uh, organization uh, to where we are today. And do you do your own website and everything too? Then uh, what I do with the website is uh, I'm kind of like the the uh, big picture concept guy. I'm the one who says, okay, I kind of want it to look like this, and here's where everything needs to be arranged and to make it easier, to make it more informational or more in-depth. And then uh, we have a, a, a company that does our web design and programming for us. And then uh, they show it to me and I give them more ideas and more thoughts. Um, so I don't actually do the, the coding of the initial website, but I do do the maintenance. Um, so I do get to play with my uh, IT toys, uh, <laughs> with websites and uh, a lot of other IT technology that we use in our company. Okay. 
And you do spend a lot of time in Thailand, would you say? Yeah, I've been spending about three months a year in Thailand, uh, spread over the year. Um, I go there um, for many things. You know, one thing, of course, is to further my education. But uh, more importantly, I go there to, to visit my family and my friends. I have a lot of uh, family that lives in Thailand. Um, my wife is from Thailand, so uh, we go there to visit them. And we also have a sister school in Thailand uh, called the Thai Massage School Shivaga Komarapai. Um, it's referred to in the U.S. as the Old Medicine Hospital. Um, this is the, the prestigious school that was started by uh, the late Ajahn Sintorn Chaichakan, um, or Master Sintorn. Uh, Master Sintorn was a Thai medicine doctor that uh, started out his career uh, in Bangkok and later moved up north to uh, Chiang Mai and started a, a traditional hospital and a traditional school. Um, this is one of the most prestigious schools in all of Thailand right now and uh, has been that way for its long history of uh, 50 years. And uh, they, anybody who's doing anything in Thai massage in the Western world in one way or another has um, gone through that school directly or they've either learned from a teacher who learned from a teacher who learned from a teacher who learned from a teacher that graduated from the old medicine hospital. Um, even several of the schools in and around Chiang Mai, which is where the healing arts are really flourishing in Thailand, um, all those schools, or a lot of those schools, many of them, um, either uh, studied at the old medicine hospital in, uh, or worked there as, as employees. And Westerners coming through to learn Thai massage in Thailand or uh, all the people that we see in the U.S. and in Europe, they've learned in one way or another from the old medicine hospital. And uh, that is our sister school. Um, they are the seat of the lineage of uh, knowledge uh, that we practice with our style of Thai massage. And they uh, recognized us formally uh, last year as the seat of their lineage outside of Thailand. So there's uh, several Skype meetings that I'll have throughout the weeks with the uh, our uh, staff and our colleagues in Thailand. And uh, when I go to visit Thailand, I uh, spend a, a good amount of time at the Old Medicine Hospital teaching, uh, collaborating, and discussing ways that we can continue to uh, bring the teachings of Ajahn Sintorn, the Master Sintorn, uh, to the people in classes and other learning opportunities. Okay, great. And then um, somebody in the chat asks, um, what makes your school institute different from others? Um, well, I think that all in all, um, Thai, the Thai massage itself is, is pretty much the same no matter where you learn it. Um, it's going to be arranged in a different routine. It's going to be a different order. Uh, the steps are going to be arranged in a different way. But by and large, it's the same palm presses, the same thumb presses, the same knee presses, and all the other things that you do. What I think really makes one school uh, different than another is um, the theories and the philosophies and the, um, the uh, historical information and the um, cultural information that is uh, distributed and shared with the students um, as part of the learning opportunity. Um, Thai massage is a, is a great spa treatment. It's wonderful for um, a spa modality. Um, it's rooted in Thailand as a medical treatment. It's a major branch of medicine in Thailand. And also, it's part of a cultural fabric in Thailand that is inseparable uh, from the healing art itself. So in some places, um, in, in these, in, in, this is what some students uh, really enjoy and, and learn, is they, they teach the technique and they teach how to do the manual and uh, physical aspects of Thai massage. But I think what's really important as the students growing even from the very basic level is that they're introduced to Thai culture. Uh, that they're introduced to uh, the traditions of Thailand, uh, that they're introduced to understand uh, the deeper philosophy of the medical practice of Thai massage um, in, in its true roots. Um, even practiced as a spa modality, um, it's important for practitioners to have that more in-depth knowledge to be able to uh, fully uh, help their clients um, no matter what setting they're in. Okay. And then somebody asked another question in the chat. What is the difference um, of Thai massage um, from yoga massage? Is there any? Is that the same thing, basically, or is there a difference? Or well, there, there's a lot of different names that are used throughout the industry to refer to the body work from Thailand. 
and the way that it's referred to in Thailand is uh, Nuit Pan Buran. These are the words that are used to, um, in the Thai language to refer to Thai massage, uh, Nuit Pan Buran. Nuit means massage, Pan means style, and Buran means traditional. So the way that I translate that is traditional Thai massage. Um, you'll sometimes hear people in Thailand refer to it as Nuit Thai, which is kind of the quick, more modern way to refer to uh, traditional Thai massage. Um, you'll see a lot of different variations of that um, in different websites and books and so forth. You'll see Nuit Buran, which um, doesn't have as much meaning to a Thai person, and they m might not understand what's being re what it's referring to. Um, in the English language, you'll hear it referred to as Thai yoga massage, or um, Thai body work, or umpteen number of other other terms. They're all referring to the healing arts of Thailand and the body work of Thailand. Um, I've chosen to refer to it as traditional Thai massage because I feel that it most closely relates to the words um, the, in the phrase that's used in Thailand in their traditional language. Um, so they're really all one and the same, um, and people are just using different words to describe the same thing. Um, of course, if you can use the word yoga and connect it to the yoga in any way, um, that's always good for, for marketing. So, um, <laughs> you know, some people do connect it to yoga and if they're practicing in a yoga environment so that it brings in yoga students and helps them to understand that there's stretching involved as part of the massage. Um, but I always encourage my students to use the words uh, traditional Thai massage because I think it most closely represents uh, the words from Thailand. And is there a form of medical Thai massage too then? Um, all massage, um, all Thai massage in Thailand is considered medical massage. Um, it, uh, Thai massage um, has uh, been part of a major branch of medicine in Thailand uh, since its, uh, you know, development. Um, it's not really considered to be a technique for relaxation, stress relief. It's, it's good for all those things um, that we think of in terms of a Swedish massage or other forms of, of body work. Um, but its true purpose is to solve medical issues. Um, I might get in a little bit of trouble saying this, but in Thailand, uh, Thai massage is used for uh, healing things or, or treating things all the way from the common cold and flu all the way up to cancer and HIV um, and everything in between. Um, I'm sure that somewhere there's a lawyer that's saying that it's illegal for me to say that, mm -hmm. and I recognize that, but... Uh, uh, I'm sharing with you the way that the Thais think of their healing arts in Thailand is it's it's used as a medical treatment. And what do think what do um, people in Thailand? What is their belief of a, a foreigner teaching their style in their country? Um, I would say that the Thai people in general, um, even with their own culture and their own people, are fairly guarded with their knowledge. The traditional style of learning in Thailand is that you find a teacher or a master that you respect and that you feel has great knowledge to share with you, and you start to build up a relationship with that individual. Over time, as you build up uh, your relationship, eventually uh, there's enough relationship there where the um, teacher may invite you to come live with them. Uh, when you're living with your uh, teacher, you would be doing things like sweeping the floor, mopping the floor, cooking dinner, washing dishes, all of those things to keep the daily household running. And as a trade, uh, the teacher is providing you um, uh, lodging, providing you uh, clothing, providing you with food to eat. And eventually, um, as the relationships develop, you receive uh, teaching and you receive knowledge. And uh, this is a relationship and traditional style of learning that's gone on for many, many, many decades and centuries in Thailand. So the Thais are very guarded with their knowledge and very guarded with information, even amongst their own people and their own culture. With Westerners, um, it's no different. Um, the classes that we see in Thailand are typically um, shorter classes um, based on technique, based on body work. Um, without as much theory and in-depth knowledge to really practice it as a medical art. Um, when you um, spend time with a master or you spend time with the Thai people over an extended period of time, 
you start to be able to immerse yourself into the culture, immerse yourself into the healing arts, and then be able to absorb more and more knowledge. So um, in order for a Westerner to really gain uh, in-depth knowledge uh, directly from the Thai people, you would need to be part of that Thai community over an extended period of time, or find a school and find teachers uh, where they've, they've done that. They've spent a lot of time in Thailand or spent a lot of time with the Thai people. Okay. And then um, the Thai herbal balls, is that popular over there? Or is that more of an American thing um, that we use that term then? Um, the herbal compresses, the herbal balls, they're, they are really popular in Thailand. There's a few uh, instructors and a few practitioners that are well known in the Western community for training and teaching that style of, of massage. It's, uh, um, it's, you're able to receive that style of massage uh, pretty much anywhere um, throughout Thailand. It uh, works really well with people that have stiff muscles, that have stiff joints, uh, maybe arthritis, or um, people who are maybe overly sensitive to the touch, like uh, uh, clients that have fibromyalgia. Um, the herbal compresses uh, do wonders with stiff um, you know, muscles. I remember the first time I ever taught an herbal massage class at a Western massage school, um, it kind of reminded me of a scene from The Wizard of Oz. Um, okay. As soon as we made the compresses uh, from scratch and we started to steam them and they started applying them to the body, I kind of heard off in the corners, it was like, oh my God, they're melting. They're melting. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on here? What's going on? I thought we had a fire or something in the, uh, in the uh, classroom, but it, they were actually referring to the muscles. They couldn't believe how much strength and how much power the herbal compress has had to release the tension and tightness out of the muscle and then therefore allow them to make more benefit with their strokes and their, their hand movements that they do in Western massage. Okay. And then uh, Marcus um, asked in the chat, uh, would a Westerner be able to practice in Thailand with no problems? Um, in Thailand, there is regulations for practicing Thai massage. Um, there's... Uh, multiple levels of training that you would need to go through. Uh, to get to the first level of training where you're actually able to practice Thai massage, it requires 150 hours of training and you need to pass a practical test and a um, written test. Um, I'm not sure if they do that written test in English or not. Um, my guess is they probably don't. Um, I imagine you can always find somebody that will hire you to, to do work. Um, our uh, training certificates that we issue through our education center are duly recognized in uh, the U.S. and in Thailand. As far as I know, to my knowledge, we're the only school uh, outside of Thailand that is duly recognized both in Thailand and in their home, home country. So students that graduate through our program and receive training, they can then uh, go to Thailand and uh, potentially be available for work just as if they had taking classes and studied in Thailand. Okay. And then um, what are the different areas of your business right now? Um, we operate um, three main areas in our business. Um, we, have a, um, uh, we have two therapy centers. Uh, one is here in Arlington, Virginia, operated under the Thai Institute of Healing Arts. Uh, one is in Sterling, Virginia, called Touch of Asia. Um, it's uh, set up with a separate website, but you can easily see that it's the same uh, company. And in these two uh, therapy centers, we have uh, professional practitioners, uh, both from Thailand and the U.S., that are performing Thai medical massage uh, for clients. In our uh, therapy center here in Arlington, we also have student practitioners that are performing student massages uh, through our student clinic. So our director of therapeutics, uh, Ajahn, or Master uh, Supamat Kananurak, um, he's a traditional Thai medicine doctor that oversees both of our therapy centers. And uh, we also have managers in those therapy centers that are um, responsible for um, all the things that you would imagine a manager would be uh, handling. Um, we also have a educational center, uh, which is here in Arlington, uh, currently teaching a whole range of um, uh, continuing education courses from a one-day introduction to Thai massage course all the way up to a two-year teacher training program including traditional Thai medicine classes, advanced Thai massage, um, herbal massage and medicinal recipes course, Thai foot massage, we have meditation workshops, we have uh, Thai self-stretching classes, 
Um, this uh, fall, we're getting ready to launch a certified massage therapy program, which is a 600-hour program, uh, which uh, has the core requirements to pass and take, take and pass the national exam. And then all of the elective hours, which is about 400 hours, are all in Thai. Um, so as far as I understand, we're the only uh, school outside of Thailand that has a certified massage therapy program that is preparing students to take the national exam uh, for massage therapy, specializing in Thai massage. Then we have a research center. Um, and by the way, our education center is uh, directed by uh, Mr. John Galiza, who's uh, got a, a lot of credentials uh, to himself. Our um, research center is um, directed by uh, Dr. Pierce Salguero. Uh, many of you on the, uh, on the um, conference call or the, uh, the live broadcast here probably are familiar with Dr. Salguero. He's been in the field for about 14 years. He started out living in Thailand for five years and has published about uh, five books and uh, getting ready to uh, launch uh, two more, uh, which are updates to his current publications. Uh, him and I have co-authored those together. Um, Dr. Salguero uh, leads up our research center. Uh, he's been researching traditional Thai massage and Thai medicine, herbal medicine for the last 14 years. And through his research center, there's multiple projects that he himself is uh, directing. We have our uh, Thai doctors. We have two Thai doctors that are involved in his research. We also have our, our professional staff that's involved in our uh, research projects and some of our students as well. That research from our research center is fed into um, our therapy center and our curriculum through our education center. And what's kind of nice is it's kind of uh, cyclical. It uh, cycles through where our therapy center generates uh, data based on uh, treatment of our clients that gets fed into our research center. Then our research center is able to uh, allow it to, to allow to share that information with our education center to help better develop our curriculum. Um, so it's really nice how the research center helps to feed the therapy center and the education center while the therapy centers uh, and education centers also feed the research center. Okay. And then um, what other kind of things are you doing for the Thai community then? Yeah, one area that I, I should have mentioned in terms of our organization is we have a director of charitable projects. Uh, uh, her name is uh, Sarah Rutt. Um, Sarah Rutt um, happens to be my wife who is currently in Thailand and uh, studying to be a, a Thai, a traditional Thai medicine doctor and a Thai midwife. Uh, she's the director of all of our charitable projects where we um, funnel a, a large portion of all of our proceeds, all of our money from our tuition, from our classes, from our products to massage therapy sessions to our, um, you know, you name it, any, any dollar that comes through um, our doors, a significant portion of that gets funneled into our charitable projects. And, she will um, look for projects inside of Thailand and uh, in other places that benefit the, the people of Southeast Asia. Uh, we've done things like visiting remote villages in Thailand that are disadvantaged and uh, low income, uh, low, uh, very high poverty, uh, very um, low education, and we will make uh, significant contributions of time, of money, of goods and products to help improve the education and economic condition of the people in that village. Um, we've done things like remodeling uh, classrooms inside of temples uh, in Thailand that are there to benefit the temple. And uh, just so happens that uh, there's a traditional Thai medicine program that is run out of that temple. Um, we've done things here inside the U.S. where we'll take all of our students over to the Thai temple and give free massages to the Thai people. One of the things that I've always uh, felt strongly about is giving back to the Thai people. The knowledge that we share in our classrooms, the, the, the services that we provide in our therapy centers um, don't belong to me. It's not something that I have any kind of cultural connection to or any kind of right to, to, to copyright or to patent or trademark. So um, this knowledge came from the Thai people, from an indigenous population in Thailand, and I feel that if I'm going to make even one dime or one nickel, uh, from that knowledge that I should be giving back to those people. So we find lots of ways in the Thai community, both by service and direct donation to various organizations and even our own projects that we initiate to ensure that we're helping the Thai people since we've uh, received this knowledge from them and, and it's helping us, we want to also help them. 
some of the other things that we're doing is uh, we're always looking for talented people to hire in our in our organization. Um, whenever Thai people come to um, to uh, interview with us, of course we're interested because it's the Thai Institute of Healing Arts, not uh, David's Institute of Healing Arts. It really belongs to the Thai people, and they've embraced it and support it. Um, you know, several hundred Thai people um, have been part of our organization and are on the peripheral to help support us. Um, so we have we employ a lot of Thai people who in turn uh, make a wage um, much better than they'd be able to receive elsewhere in America or in Thailand. And they're able to support their families here in America and send money back to Thailand to help their families in Thailand. And uh, out of everything that I do at the Thai Institute um, in Touch of Asia, um, the thing that I uh, truly, truly enjoy the most is knowing that I'm helping uh, people in general, but specifically helping uh, the Thais. Um, I feel that they've really embraced me. Um, I'm, I'm feel very much at home as part of their community. And uh, I just uh, get great pleasure out of out of uh, helping them any way that I can. That's awesome. And then um, um, Pam in the um, in the chat asks, can you talk a little about the difference between or similarities of Thai foot massage and foot reflexology? Sure, I can talk about that. Um, thai foot massage. Um, I, well, let me before I before I start describing uh, my my thoughts on that question. I should preface it with saying I know nothing about American reflexology or any other reflexology. Um, the only thing that I know is um, a, a Thai, is, is from Thailand. Um, but I can compare um, what I do know um, about Thai reflexology in the, in the very uh, little that I know about American reflexology or other forms of reflexology. Um, thai reflexology is um, really Chinese reflexology with Thai massage uh, uh, theory overlay. So what do I mean by that? Um, Chinese reflexology um, and most other reflexologies um, are based on the, the idea that um, specific zones in your, your feet or reflex points correlate to specific uh, areas in your body. And by opening up those reflex points, you can bring about health and better health uh, to the individual. Well, Thai reflexology is exactly the same. Um, that underlying theory is there. Um, the reflexology map on the foot is different between Thai reflexology, Chinese reflexology, and American reflexology. Um, so a particular area on the foot, say, you know, the top of the pinky, uh, might mean one thing in Thai reflexology and something else in another reflexology. But they all agree that that's an important point uh, for health. Um, so the Thai map, is it's a unique map on the bottom of the foot, but it it resembles more closely Chinese reflexology. Then the Thai Zen theory um, that some of you may be familiar with that have had exposure to Thai massage um, or have maybe taken Thai massage classes, the Thai Zen theory is then overlaid over top of the Thai foot massage uh, theory to the point where you're actually doing Thai Zen along the leg, the lower leg up to the knee. Uh, so you use a lotion and an oil mixture, you mix it together, you use your hands and you use a reflexology tool, a reflexology stick, uh, which is fairly unique. Uh, you don't see too many reflexology um, uh, modalities that use that. And uh, you use the combination of this oil and lotion with the stick in your hands to activate these various reflex uh, points and areas and then also massage the Thai Zen. So it's a very unique treatment. Uh, to Thailand. It's different than Chinese reflexology. It's different than American reflexology. Um, it's fairly new to Thailand. Um, you know, it's hard to date exactly uh, when Thai reflexology came into Thailand, but it looks like it's about um, as old as maybe 250 years old. And there's, of course, a uh, difference of opinions to that in one way or another. Um, but based on uh, the, the people that I've spoken with, uh, in Thailand is it seems like it's been there for about 250 years, which makes it extremely new when it comes to healing arts in Thailand. Okay. And then, um, is there still turmoil between China and Thailand then? China and Thailand? Hmm. Um, I don't know if I would say turmoil is the right word. Um, there's a lot of Chinese people in Thailand. There was a mass migration of Thai people. Um, modern day Thailand, as it sits today, um, wasn't always uh, filled with Thai people. Um, 
the Thai people originally were over, over in an area that we now refer to as northern Vietnam and southern China. Around 800 AD to 1200 AD, the Chinese uh, started to migrate south. Uh, this is during the Tang Dynasty, which was a very powerful dynasty in, Thai, in uh, China. As they did that, it put population pressure on the black and white Thai, the ethnic groups of the Thai people. So they ended up migrating out of southern China in northern Vietnam and moving into uh, the modern day area that we now refer to as Thailand. Uh, during that migration and even uh, today, there's a large amount of Chinese people that are ethnically Chinese but have lived in Thailand for many generations. They speak Thai, they identify uh, as being Thai, they're very proud of their Thai culture. But if you talk to them long enough, you'll find out that their grandmother or their grandfather uh, was Chinese and came from China. Um, so the, 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 the native Thai people, um, and there's about 72 different subclasses of Thai people, um, they are um, intermixed in modern day Thailand with Chinese people. Um, and, they, and they get along. Um, they consider themselves you know, all Thai. Everyone knows who's you know, Chinese and who's um, indigenous Thai. Um, but I don't really see a whole lot of turmoil uh, between the two countries. Okay. Um, more of the turmoil with Thailand comes uh, between uh, Burma and, and Thailand or, or Myanmar and Thailand and also Cambodia as well. Um, there's some tensions there around borders and uh, some of the various um, aspects of uh, two countries or three countries neighboring each other. Okay. And then the when the Thai um, therapists over there, when they perform Thai massage, is it more of a routine, or do they get into specific ailments and problems? Yeah, there's, you know, with everything and with every uh, skilled labor, there's always various levels of education, uh, even amongst the Thai people. Um, one of the um, misconceptions in uh, uh, some folks that I've spoken with is that Everyone in Thailand knows exactly the same thing and they all practice it the same way and they all have the same knowledge and they're all doing the same massage. Um, that's not true. Um, they all have had various training, various backgrounds, various experiences, and because of that, they're performing Thai massage in many, many different ways. Um, there's the street stalls that are have mats right out on the sidewalk and those people are doing massage with the cars whizzing by and the people walking past and honking the horns, that's one level of skill. Then you've got what's called a muscle shop. Um, these are people that have shops that are just kind of uh, part of a, a, you know, a, a, what we might call a strip mall. And uh, they just have their little shop in there and you might go in and there's a big open air place and people just walk in and you get you know worked on and um, they worked really deep into your muscles and just work out all those aches and pains. Um, and there might be a couple of people out of the 30 or 40 that are in the shop, there might be a couple of people that are known to be really, really, really good, really knowledgeable. Um, then you've got your spas, Western spas, that are um, tend to be um, educated through more of an inter international educational program and be able to graduate that program and then get a, a really nice spa job where they're making a, a very handsome income for themselves. And then of course there's the medical facilities like the old medicine hospital, Thai massage school, Shivaga Kumarapai. At this medical facility, which is also a school, um, they have uh, very skilled uh, practitioners that are trained to do massage at, as a medical discipline. Um, in Thailand, the word for this is Mo Nuit, or doctor of massage. Um, Thai massage is so important to their medical practices that you can graduate to the level of a, of a doctor. And uh, if you go to these medical establishments that are traditional hospitals, you, can, uh, you are more likely to see uh, a practitioner that is a Mo Nuit or someone who is very skilled and knowledgeable to practice Thai massage at the medical level. And um, but the the Thai medical doctors, that's not anything close to what doctors over here like actual surgeries and things like that, right? Yeah, the traditional Thai medicine doctors, they're mainly working with with herbs, with herbal medicine. A lot of them also understand traditional medicine, traditional Thai massage. Um, there's essentially three branches of medicine. 
in Thailand, there's a body branch of medicine which deals with keeping the body healthy on a physical level all the way down to the physical structures of the body, the atomical level. Um, that is administered with herbs and dietary uh, supplements. The traditional Thai medicine doctor is responsible for administering that branch of medicine, keeping the person healthy on a physical level. Then there's a branch of medicine called Chita. This is the branch of medicine that deals with the emotional self or self-development, self-cultivation. This is usually practiced in Thailand through Buddhism and shamanism. And the individuals that would administer care under this branch of medicine would be like a very uh, knowledgeable monk, a master monk, and a doctor of, uh, of shamanism. Then the third branch of medicine is the energy branch of medicine. This is the branch of medicine that deals with keeping the energetic self healthy, or um, you know, thinking of it as a life force in the body. Um, so th that is where Thai massage comes into play. It's a major branch of medicine in Thailand where Thai massage is used to keep the energetic self healthy by moving loam through the Zen or moving energy through the pathway or through the vessel. And even though you're thumb pressing, palm pressing, you're stretching, you're opening up a joint, everything to a Thai massage practitioner or a Thai uh, massage doctor um, is geared towards opening up the Zen. All three of these branches of medicine in Thailand are practiced um, at the same time, simultaneously. So any kind of ailment is thought to have disease residing in all three branches of medicine. So a patient would end up receiving care by a Thai doctor for herbs and dietary supplements for the body branch of medicine. They would end up visiting a master monk in order to address the chitta branch of medicine or maybe a shaman. And then they would see a Thai uh, massage doctor to address the energy branch of medicine uh, with Thai massage. So is there regular um, physician doctors over there then? There are. They have great Western hospitals, some of the best I've ever been to. Um, many of their doctors have studied here in America and then went back to Thailand. Um, there was a recent survey a few years back that um, surveyed Western doctors in Thailand that are all Thai, and 86% uh, of them are able to uh, also administer care with traditional Thai medicine. So they have training in both Western care and traditional Thai medicine. So whenever you go in to see a doctor in Thailand, they're going to be able to treat you with both medicines. Um, sometimes here we get a lot of um, infighting or um, you know banging of heads. Uh, in Thailand, everybody realizes that there's got to be multiple practitioners in the picture in order to bring about health and well-being. So it dates back to their traditional model of medicine of the body branch, the chitta branch, and the energy branch, where there's multiple practitioners bringing health to the client. So even today, when they're practicing Western medicine, they realize that there's multiple things that need to be brought to the table in order to heal the client or heal the, the patient, and in a lot of cases, multiple practitioners. And then in the chat, they asked, um, who would a person go to, um, to a Thai medicine doctor or a Western style doctor if they were sick over there? Well, it, that's a, that's a kind of a complex question because it really comes down to the individual. Um, what's their economic condition or situation? Uh, what's their location in the country? Are they in the city where they have access to hospitals easily? Are they out in the remote villages? Uh, where it might take two hours to get into the into the facility. Um, what's their beliefs? How significant is the illness? Um, you know, if they um, have something minor, there's probably a doctor in the village that can do some herbal medicine. Um, even grandma and grandpa might be around, or mom and dad might be around that can do some things. Um, a lot of people have knowledge in traditional medicine in Thailand, um, using herbs to to heal and various substances. So. The decision to go off to a hospital or go off to um, a traditional um, hospital, it really depends on a lot of factors. Uh, more than likely, they're going to uh, treat with both. Uh, herbal medicine is very prevalent uh, throughout the whole country. Um, but if you've got a, a broken leg um, and the bone you know, is protruding and your uh, blood's dripping on the floor, um, you got to go get the bone set by someone that knows how to do bone setting. And that would in most cases be a Western hospital, but there are actually some uh, doctors out in the villages that know how to do bone setting um, because they've been remote their whole life and people can't make it into the hospital so they actually know how to set the bone. Um, so it really just depends uh, on a lot of different factors. 
Okay. And then uh, another person asks, um, is the Thai herbal medicine as extensive as Chinese herbal medicine, and how do they determine what herbs to use? Do you, do you know anything about the Chinese um, herbal? I know, I know a little bit. Um, I'll say that um, Thai medicine is a complete, unique form of medicine all to itself. Um, there's a lot of uh, reading and a lot of things that are um, shared in the public that talk about uh, Thai massage and Thai medicine as being a combination of Ayurvedic, Indian medicine, and Chinese medicine, and kind of put it together, and now we have Thai medicine. But it's really not that easy. Um, it's a much more complex um, process that Thai medicine went through in order to be created. Uh, there's a lot of cultural factors, um, a lot of tradition, pra pra traditional practices, spiritual practices, um, uh, you know, migrations and movement of people and ideas. Um, so whenever you think of Thai medicine, think of it as its own unique form of medicine that is just as complex as anything out there that you would ever want to study. You can go to school for Thai, for Thai medicine for 12 years, and still when you graduate, you're considered a student. You really don't know it all. You can talk with people that have been doing Thai medicine um, for their whole life, and they're 80, 90 years old, and they'll tell you that they're still a student and they're still learning. Um, the complexities um, in Thai medicine are are vast, and that's why it's really important to get a solid education from a very reputable school and by teachers that have really spent time uh, absorbing knowledge from uh, the Thai people. Um, how is How are herbs uh, determined which herbs to, to give? Um, there's multiple diagnoses uh, within the Thai system. Um, you can almost think of them as different lenses. Um, Thai people, uh, when they're a uh, Thai doctor, when they're um, diagnosing, they will pick up these various lenses and look through them and then diagnose with those lenses in order to come to a, a, a diagnosis and ultimately to a treatment. So they might look at the person through the four elements or five elements, depending on how you look at that. Um, they may look at them through the Thai Zen. They might look at astrological diagnosis. They might do some pulse diagnosis, some tongue diagnosis. And I know some of these things are similar to other cultures and other medicines that you know of. Um, even though the Thais are doing tongue diagnosis and pulse diagnosis, they're doing it in their own way. It's not exactly the same as Chinese medicine. Um, then once you get a diagnosis in multiple different ways, um, you then start looking at uh, what's called the, the taste, the herb taste. And there's um, different systems of, of classifying herbs in Thailand, and you would end up uh, picking and selecting certain tastes of herbs that would be needed in order to bring health to the body. And once you select those herbs, you would then harvest the herbs, combine them into some type of recipe, and then administer them uh, with your patient. Okay. And then um, what, what about your actual center? Is it similar to other centers in Thailand? We've designed our center um, exactly like the old medicine hospital, uh, Thai Massage School, Shivaga Komarapai. Um, we have a lot of respect for the Thai people and what the Thai people do, and they're our leaders. They're the ones that we're following. Uh, we're letting them tell us how we should structure our organization, how we should lead our classes, how we should do our therapy, uh, what needs to be in our curriculum. Um, the Thai people are, are leading us through that and have been uh, ever since we started. Um, so when we, um, since we have so much respect for the Thai people, and the old medicine hospital, um, we're essentially looking to them on how to how to organize our our center. So in um, Thailand, uh, up in Chiang Mai at the old medicine hospital, they have their center organized by the three branches of medicine that I described. So they have one area where uh, there's Thai doctors that are treating the body, administering care under the body branch of medicine. They have one area where there's the chitta branch of medicine or the development of the inner self uh, being administered, and then they have one area where the uh, Thai massage or the energy branch of medicine is being administered. And we've set up our um, medical center here um, at the Thai Institute in the same way, so that we have all three branches under one roof and administered by uh, Thai people and also Westerners. Um, one, of the, one of the visions that I had when I was working with the Thai people and creating the Thai Institute was I wanted to have this cross-cultural um, exchange between the Thai people and uh, Westerners. 
Um, I, I kind of envisioned the Thai people coming in and helping to lead us through the, the development of our curriculum and our therapy centers and so forth, and um, us Westerners gaining insight and gaining knowledge from the Thais doing that. And then having Westerners uh, working right alongside the Thai people, either as students or as professional therapists or administrative staff, working right alongside the Thai people so that we're then helping to teach the Thai people, uh, teach them some English, teach them American culture and how to better acclimate themselves to the country. Um, and there's uh, just this constant cultural uh, exchange that's happening under our roof. In addition to uh, treating patients and helping people in the public, uh, we're also helping ourselves through this uh, exchange of, of information and knowledge. Okay. And over there, is it hard to survive if you don't understand their language? In Thailand? Yeah. Um, I think you'd be just fine uh, traveling in Thailand without speaking any Thai. It's fun to try to speak Thai. Um, I would encourage anybody who's going to Thailand to try to speak a little bit of Thai because uh, that's seen by the Thai people as being uh, uh, something that they admire to see that Westerners are actually interested in speaking their language, even if all you can say is Sawadee Kap or Sawadee Ka or Kap Kung Ka or Kap Kung Kap. Um, if they just hear you speaking a little bit of their language, they love it um, because it shows that we're interested in what they do and we care about what they do. Um, because they're very interested in what we're doing. Um, English is spoken uh, throughout the country, depending on which areas you go to. Um, it can be a little bit more difficult in one area or another. Uh, of course, the tourist areas, there's a lot of English. Um, but I would suggest to anybody going to Thailand to try to speak a little bit of Thai. Okay. And somebody in the chat asks, since the 80-year-old still considers themselves a student, how long would one have to study here in the United States to be able to learn and practice Thai massage? We have a, a basic Thai massage course, which is modeled after uh, the old medicine hospital, um, tr the traditional uh, the Thai massage school, Shivaga Komarapai. Um, our basic Thai massage course uh, puts a lot of material into five days. Uh, we teach a 40-hour um, intensive course uh, over five days that once you graduate, you have uh, enough material to do a two-hour professional-level Thai massage and have the theories, knowledge, culture, and traditional understanding in which to administer that massage. Um, you're not going to be perfect, you're not going to be a master, um, but you're definitely going to have the tools that you need to graduate on the last day with being able to do a full-time massage without your book. And from there, the idea is that students will then practice on their own, uh, or perhaps uh, come to our student clinic, do additional massages alongside of us, um, or even come back in our internship program. Uh, modeling that traditional uh, way of learning that I talked about at the beginning, where you move in with your teacher and you study alongside of them for so many years, uh, we have that same program built into our school. Um, it's called an internship program, where you can come back to the same course that you've taken. Uh, you can keep coming back as many times as you want for free. There's no cost, no nothing else to pay. Uh, you just send us an email, let us know you're coming. Uh, you show up and uh, we spend more time with you in the classroom to deepen your knowledge and deepen your skills. Um, so with that five-day class and some practice um, outside of class or maybe perhaps uh, an internship, you'd be good to go uh, to start doing professional level Thai massage. And is it uh, required that they be a massage therapist beforehand or what's the re requirements for that? That varies from state to state and sometimes even county to county. Um, it all depends on your local laws, your local regulations. Um, I haven't seen uh, very many regulations across the U.S. that would preclude anybody from doing Thai massage um, after taking our five-day basic Thai massage class. Um, from there, I would you know, always encourage people to continue their education into our intermediate and advanced levels, which is where in the advanced level we start teaching how to uh, diagnose or assess uh, your client and then create a customized treatment for their specific issues. Um, but uh, all the laws vary from, from state to state, county to county, um, but it's just a matter of understanding those laws and making sure you're following them. And do you get into the send lines much? Absolutely. From uh, the very first class, um, we teach the Zen lines. Um, it's an integral part of the Thai massage. If you were going to take every single thing out of a Thai massage and still be able to call it a Thai massage, 
uh, the Zen lines would be the last thing to go. Um, the Zen are, are the, the fundamental um, method of treatment in a, in a Thai medical massage or in Thai massage. So from the very first day and the very first class all the way through our program, we're showing the students where the Zen are, helping them find them, discover them, showing them how to treat through those Zen, um, and helping them to uh, develop knowledge around uh, using them. And do you get into Thai on the table at all? I have not taught Thai on the table. Um, I actually don't do a table massage myself. Um, I really appreciate table massage. I love get, getting it as a receiver. Um, in our therapy centers, we do do a form of table massage that we call east-west massage. It's a combination of Thai massage with some Swedish and deep tissue on the table, but we just choose to call it a different name, like east-west. Um, the main reason that I don't teach Thai on the table is um, because of my affection for the Thai people, I believe that I need to represent their healing art in the way that it was taught to me. And that was down on the floor with thin clothing and no lotions or oils being used. Anytime that um, we do it in any other way, I feel that we should call it something different that doesn't include the word Thai, um, because that's the way to best respect the Thai people and the Thai culture for the knowledge that they shared with us, is to represent it in the way that it's practiced in Thailand. And sure, it's practiced in Thailand on the table as well, using some oil, um, but they're really just doing that to kind of please the Western appetite. Okay. Um, I haven't taught it on the table because I think it's best suited for the floor. Um, I know that there's some people that unfortunately can't get down on the floor, and what I usually do is encourage them to take what I'm learning or teach what, take, take what I'm teaching and bring it up to the table. And usually, uh, based on what I'm teaching, they can bring it up to the table and integrate the work uh, on their own. Once they know table massage, they can study with me and Ty uh, on the floor, um, and they can bring it up on the table on their own. Um, what kind of supplies do you recommend? The uh, basic supplies are a really nice Thai massage mat. Um, uh, it's important to have a mat that is nice and uh, has a lot of cushion. The ones that we use are about two inches thick. They're about the size of a queen size bed. Um, that gives you plenty of space to work around. And as you push your client's body into the mat, it uh, absorbs that body and then uh, pushes it back towards you to give it a nice slow steady release. If you have a thinner mat, um, it ends up pushing the body down into the floor, and it affects the feeling of your massage. Um, some mats will have extensions where you have to move those around the, the, the mat. Um, I don't like those as much, just a personal preference. Um, when I'm working on my client, I really want to focus on my client, and that's it. I don't want to have to worry about moving attachments and uh, different pieces around uh, the mat. So I have a big queen-size mat, nice and thick and cushy. Um, I put it down, my client lays down, and I can go to work and not have to think about moving things around. Um, of course, a pillow, um, some thin clothing uh, for you and your client, uh, maybe some scrubs, sweatpants, pajamas, something of that nature. Um, that's really the basics. Um, we've added a horseshoe uh, face rest so that our clients can keep their neck straight as they, as they go face down. And uh, we also, of course, wash our clients' feet as part of the massage for cleanliness and uh, cultural reasons also. And do you usually have a sheet on top of the mat or it's just um, the regular mat then? Yeah, we put a sheet on top. Um, that way it protects the mat and uh, you can take it off and, and clean it each time. Okay. And then um, are there any kind of mats out there that you recommend though? Um, companies at all then? or? Yeah, there's only one mat that I recommend. I've, I've seen many and, I'm, and I don't mean to offend anyone. I'm sure there's some other good ones out there, but <laughs> I've only ever needed one mat, and it's uh, from Sun and Moon Originals. Uh, we sell it through our our school at uh, our cost. We have a really good relationship with them. We've probably sold a thousand of their mats over the years, um, and uh, they give us a really great deal. Um, we either drop ship it to people's house or we uh, give it to them here in our center when they come to learn with us. Um, we're, we don't really look to make gobs and gobs of money. Uh, we just want to help people do well and, and you know get the equipment that they need to uh, do this work. So we order in a bunch of mats before each class, um, get a wholesale rate because we order so many in, uh, at a time, and then we give them back to our students at our same rate um, so that we get to use the mat for five days in the class, they get a really low price on the mat, and uh, get the equipment they need to start their practice.
Okay. And how many um, students have, would you say you've taught over the years? I actually had to count this recently for <laughs> that <it> me. <laughs> so I just happened to know um, it was over a thousand. Um, that was about four months ago. Um, it was somewhere over a thousand. And and how many people do you have in your each of your classes? Would you say on average? We like to keep our classes small. We really um, measure our success off of quality rather than quantity. Um, our average class size is somewhere between six to ten students. Um, and oftentimes, will end up as eight. I've taught classes as small as one or two people. I, I don't like to cancel classes. Um, students. Um, take time away from work, they book plane tickets, they get hotels, they do a lot of effort just to get to the point where they've registered for my class. And if one or two students show up, I will teach the class. Um, I've done it um, a few times. Um, I would much rather have you know six, eight, or ten, but we never um, go above 12 students in a class. And then there's also interns that come. Um, so uh, we usually have a nice, healthy group, um, you know, somewhere between eight and ten. Uh, right now, I'm teaching a class of basic Thai massage students. We have, I think we have nine, um, maybe eight or nine students, and we have about three interns. Um, and the interns are really great because they get to come back and deepen their learning and their education and be part of the class all over again. And do people come from all over the United States to your facility, or is it mostly people around um, the state where you're at? We have about 50% of our uh, students come from the local area. Uh, that's uh, Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. And then another 50% come from all over the country and even all over the world. We've had people from Canada, from Germany, from France, from Spain, from South America, um, all over the place, Thailand. Um, we're, we're really blessed that we have a, a great group of people that, that has come together and really get serious into learning the Thai healing arts. And is it important to be really flexible, though, for perform Thai massage? Um, when I first started Thai Massage, I was very inflexible. Um, I'm more flexible now than I was when I first started because I'm on the floor, I'm loosening up my joints, I'm opening up my muscles. So there was definitely a break-in period for a few weeks, and most students will experience that. But we have different um, ways of helping them and guiding them through that break-in period. And uh, we help them in our classes to go through that break-in period, to ease into it, and then get comfortable working on the floor. Uh, Thais grow up on the floor, they do everything on the floor, so their bodies are well suited for Thai massage. Um, ours are not, um, we don't you know, sit on the floor as much, um, so once students start getting comfortable being down on the floor, um, then they get uh, very comfortable being able to do the massage as well. And do you have, um, do you have any DVDs that you, you've made at all, or are you going to be making DVDs in the future? I'm looking to do some YouTube videos to start getting some information out there. Um, we've been really busy with a number of different things, different projects. Um, I haven't been so big into creating instructional videos because I, I feel that students really should be in a classroom learning with a, a qualified teacher. Um, we do have a video on our online forum. Uh, which is a place where students gather, practitioners, doctors, uh, many people from all over the world gather and collaborate online. Um, uh, we do have a video on there, which is a, a complete run through of our basic routine. Um, and I have a bunch of videos of cultural um, lessons when I was in Thailand. And as I go to Thailand each, each time, I will uh, create videos uh, teaching students things from the classroom and kind of uh, amplifying that. Uh, while I'm in Thailand, but instructional videos I, I just have kind of shied away from um, just because of timing, uh, having at the time, and then I just really think students should be in a classroom with a teacher. Um, but I will be getting some YouTube videos out there to just kind of uh, highlight certain aspects of uh, Thai massage that I think would really help uh, the people out there in the field working. And what about books? We, uh, we have several books. Um, Dr. Pierre Sagero has uh, published over the last uh, five or six years uh, a series of uh, five books. Um, him and I just uh, co-authored um, uh, new editions of two of those books. Um, the Encyclopedia of Thai Massage is due out uh, September 1st, although it looks like it might be coming out sooner. Um, we did a complete um, update from cover to cover, um, all brand new professional photo photos, 
um, complete rewrites or, or, or additional information from our research that we've been doing over the last several years. Um, his original book was published in 2005. Um, from 2005 until now, uh, we've discovered and um, learned a lot of things about Thai massage uh, through our relationships in the Thai community and our research that we didn't know in, back in 2005. So our theoretical content has, uh, th there's been a lot added to that. And then we've completely rewritten all of our descriptions of uh, the steps of the, each step in the, the book so that students would have updated information, uh, very detailed descriptions of each individual step and how to execute it. And we really see this book as a way to kind of wet your whistle and kind of see if time massage is something you might be interested in exploring um, and as a book, um, as a reference guide or a, um, or a uh, complement to your training. Uh, we wouldn't ever want anybody to, to purchase one of these books and then go out and try to actually perform Thai massage without any kind of training. Um, these books are, are very well suited for the classroom environment. Um, the Old Medicine Hospital in Thailand um, uses this book. Um, our um, school here uh, uses this book, and I know that it's, it's been the bestseller on Amazon ever since it was published six years ago. Um, so that book is being uh, republished in its uh, new format uh, coming up uh, at the early fall, uh, late summer. And then the second book that's being published is the, the complement to that book, which is the workbook. Um, we uh, have a workbook that we've been using for uh, many years with uh, great pictures. Um, but, you know, Thai massage is, is a living art that is always growing. Um, things are always being improved and added um, in terms of making it better, but still sticking to the uh, intentions of the Thai people. So as body mechanics are improved, as uh, new things are learned, uh, we've updated all the pictures in our workbook so that now teachers out there that are teaching will be able to use this workbook as a teaching tool. Okay, and then somebody asked, um, this, you said it's kind of off the subject, but um, over in Thailand, do people eat bugs as snacks? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've seen my uh, video of my wife eating uh, a large uh, cockroach um, in the middle of the Chiang Mai market. Um, absolutely, they eat bugs. Um, my wife loves bugs. Um, she likes them sautéed rather than boiled. So if you ever want to give her a gift, give her sautéed cockroaches. She loves that. <laughs> um, but if a grasshopper should happen to jump across the living room floor, she's on the couch in a minute. Um, I don't understand it. <laughs> I, um, back in the day, I used to raise co um, exotic cockroaches as pets. Oh, wow. What's yeah. an exotic cockroach? Yeah, like the hissing cockroaches and stuff. And, and then um, when they would pass away, I would actually make them in, into jewelry and stuff. So, but Yeah, that, you guys, whoever has the, the cockroach question or the bug question, go out to our online forum. It's uh, If you go to thai-institute.com and click on the Education Center in the online forum, look for our videos. Um, you'll see my wife eating bugs, and you'll see the whole buffet of bugs on the table. Okay. <laughs> hey, and there's got to be, I mean, some nutritional value in there too. So, there's got to be. I, I I've planned to eat bugs many times, and uh, every time I, I say, okay, today's the day we're gonna go out and get me some bugs. Um, we see the vendor, and they're like kind of wet and juicy and slimy. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want those bugs. So I understand why my wife likes the sautéed ones because they're dry. Um, they're much more crunchy as opposed to the uh, boiled ones, which are wet and soft and gooey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how long are the usual treatments for Thai, thai massage over, over in the, um, Thailand compared to over here? Yeah, the standard treatment for, uh, in Thailand for Thai massage is two hours. That would be kind of a standard treatment uh, where you're getting an entire body massage as well as uh, some therapy as well, also. Uh, 90 minutes would be a, an express massage. You don't really have a whole lot of time. You got to get in, you got to get out. Um, uh, you can also get treatments upwards of three hours and beyond. Uh, that would be for a more significant is issue like cancer or fibromyalgia or something like that. In America, people tend to want 60 minutes, which you can do a effective 60 minute massage, time massage. I've uh, done them several times and our staff does them and, and we're very pleased with our 60 minute massage. We tend to do a lot of uh, 90 minutes and two hours um, because people uh, become educated and they realize that that's a better option for them. And is there, um, is there any kind of rituals before the treatment at all, like meditation and things? And... 
there is. There's um, uh, a very big spiritual component to Thai massage. As you heard me talk about the three branches of medicine, uh, each of those branches of medicine are contained within the others. So in the energy branch, which represents Thai massage, you are definitely affecting the physical body of uh, through the stretching and through the soft tissue manipulation, joint mobilization, and so forth. And there's also a big spiritual component. Uh, in the morning, in Thai therapy centers, uh, including ours, our medical center, um, there is a, a morning ceremony called a Y crew, which means uh, to respect the teacher. And uh, this is really focused towards the uh, founder of Thai medicine, uh, Javaka Komarabaka. He's um, considered to be the founder of medicine in Thailand. And this Y crew, there's uh, various chants and prayers and uh, various uh, Buddhist type things that would be done in order to um, pay respect to the knowledge that you're either utilizing in your therapy or that you're gaining through your classes. Um, and it's done in Thailand, of course, in a Buddhist way because they're very Buddhist. Um, but it can also be done with other spiritual practices as well. And then right at the beginning of your actual massage, you go into a prayer, a silent prayer, in order to center yourself, set your intention, and ensure that you're focusing your healing energy on your client. Uh, both of these practices, I feel, um, are very um, compatible with Western culture. Um, sure, they're done in Thailand as a, as a Buddhist practice, um, or using Buddhist practices, um, but the real intention is really to calm yourself, relax yourself, prepare yourself for the work ahead, and ensure that you are plugging in to your client with good, healthy um, uh, energy and good, healthy mindset with the intention to heal, and that's really universal. Um, the term metta is something that people have probably heard a lot, or loving kindness, or love for all beings. This is a um, concept in Thai culture and in Thai healing arts that um, starts with the individual practitioner and the individual healer, where you fill yourself up with loving kindness and love for all beings, and then you share that through the massage, through your touch with your client. And uh, there again, I just think that's a very universal um, concept, uh, whether it's um, any form of, of religion or not, um, just uh, calming yourself, relaxing yourself, and then sharing uh, love uh, with other beings. And I see you teach, was a Buddhist meditation workshops too? Yes, we have a um, workshop every uh, two weeks. It's the second and fourth Thursday of every month where uh, we teach meditation. Um, we, we open it up to the public and we hope that a lot of our students will, will come as well that are learning massage with us because uh, performing massage in a calm, meditative approach uh, makes you that much better of a practitioner and that's honestly why we started these meditation workshops is we wanted more of our we wanted our students to, to really be coming uh, and it's completely free it, it, we don't charge anything for this workshop at all um, we get a lot of people from the public um, sometimes I teach it but the real leader of that um, workshop is Pra Ajahn Tanai uh, he's a master monk from Thailand he's been ordained since he was 14 years old um, he currently holds a PhD and he travels all over the world, um, both in the U.S. and internationally, uh, teaching uh, meditation retreats. Uh, he's also a published author. Um, he's really well known in the, in the Thai community, and uh, he comes here uh, every two weeks in order to teach our students uh, meditation. And if he happens to be away at a retreat or something like that, I'll usually teach. Um, sometimes we even show a movie, like a, a movie uh, based on a certain concept, uh, that we are trying to uh, share with our students. And then um, for, I mean, for, for price-wise, um, you don't have to go in the depth about the price, but is there payment plans or anything else that if people are having a hard time struggling to come up with it? Or Yes, we've, uh, we've got financial aid as part of our institution. Um, we've worked out with a, um, a lending institution that our students receive uh, financial aid at 0% interest. Um, they will basically loan them money for 12 months with no interest and uh, they can pay for all their classes, their books, anything they want to pay, or actually books are included in the, the tuition fees, um, but uh, all our products, anything that they might need from us, um, we have a local lending institution that will approve them for a loan uh, that uh, is zero percent interest for 12 months and then after that it goes up to something like eight percent, something really small. Um, so uh, it's really a good uh, relationship that we have set up for our students to be able to do that.
That's insane because I, I know a lot of massage schools have a hard time even doing anything close to that. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we've, we've been very fortunate. You know, we keep really great relationships in the community and people around us. And like I said, we just have a great community of students, uh, employees, staff, uh, directors, um, uh, our sister school. You know, everyone that supports us in Thailand here in the states. Um, we just have a great community of people, and we just try to figure out what's the best thing for all of us. And is there any other things that we haven't covered that you think needs to be covered for this? Um, gosh, we could talk for days, right? <laughs> maybe even weeks, and uh, not really cover it all. But uh, I guess uh, I would just invite all the uh, people that are watching uh, this video or uh, watching it live to uh, just reach out uh, to us. We really want to be uh, your resource to help you get closer to Thailand and closer to the Thai healing arts. We have uh, lots of great resources online that are free. We have lots of events here that are at no cost. Um, of course, we do have classes that you're welcome to sign up for um, and then come back and intern and do more learning with us. So uh, just reach out to us, uh, connect with us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Uh, I personally have a Facebook page that I, I check every day. Uh, we have an online forum. Uh, we have a great community of people that have, that have come together. And uh, it would be great if uh, you guys would join us. And the best way to get a hold of you would be through your website then? Yeah, the website has uh, a lot of information, thai-institute.com, has a lot of information uh, in terms of our classes, our therapies, our research center. Um, and once you go to our main page to thai-institute.com, if you click on research center, that'll push you through to our online forum, uh, which is a closed environment uh, that you can join for free. And there's all kinds of great resources out there. And you don't even have to join, actually. You can use all the resources without even uh, registering. Um, but you'll see our phone numbers out there and our, our emails. If, if you're really interested in, in studying the Thai healing arts, um, you'll be able to find us. Just uh, do a Google search for Thai Institute uh, or even you know Thai Massage uh, USA. Uh, we come up pretty much in all the Google stuff. Um, you know, if uh, you won't have a problem finding us. Okay. <laughs> and in this video, too. So. <laughs> yeah, this video, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute um, pleasure tonight. Um, so, and then, so again, so if anybody wants to get a hold of you, Tom, Thai Dash Institute. Um, and so you're, you'll answer your emails morning, day, and night, then, right? Yeah, I'm in yeah. email all the time. That's like my to do list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks. All right, thanks, Ryan. Yep. Somebody... yep, too. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.